All right, so let's look at the third point that deals with this new market shift, uh, the impact on the property valuation. Property valuation is the cornerstone of the real estate market. It can be and often is influenced by a myriad of factors. So understanding all of these factors is crucial for a homeowner, a buyer, an investor, a real estate professional, all of us, all right? So we're gonna talk about how these things can affect this market shift, like property valuation, uh, reduced buyer pool, economic conditions, supply and demand, all of those things. So first let's start with the affordability. Affordability is the topic we've touched on. It's a fundamental factor in influencing the property valuation. In a market where the homes are have a much broader reach of population, property values tend to remain stable or can actually appreciate. Conversely, when affordability becomes a challenge due to the rising interest rates that we've talked about, high mortgage costs, economic downturn, property valuations can also experience a downward pressure. So the ability of a potential buyer to afford a home directly affects the demand, which in turn plays a pivotal role in determining property values what you get is a reduced buyer pool. Changes in the market condition can lead to a reduction in the buyer of, or the pool of potential buyers. Factors such as the economic uncertainty, job market fluctuation, more stringent lending criteria can limit the number of qualified buyers. So a diminished pool of buyers exerts a downward pressure on property. That's basic econ that we covered in the pre-licensing course. Remember, one of the topics of value was how many people are interested in the property. And if you reduce the amount of people that are potential buyers, you reduce the value. So often sellers will face a challenge in finding suitable buyers willing to meet the asking price. Uh, investment behavior. That is a significant driver in the property valuation. In t times of economic uncertainty, investors are going to adopt a cautious approach, which may lead to a reduced demand in the real estate asset. Now, there is a report going around that I read that said 44% of all residential homes were bought by investors. Dude, that's wrong, all right? Um, this is one of those topics where people read something and, hey, it's on the Internet. It's got to be true. You guys need to go out and do your own research. Freddie Mac, the Economic and Housing Research Department, did a study and showed that large real estate investors, and by large, they mean people that own more than 100 units, only accounted for 2.5% of the sales in 2022. So it is not a large section like you're reading. That is just more fodder for uh, heated conversation and debates by the uneducated. But conversely, in a robust economic environment, increased investors' confidence will contribute and become heightened and the demand will drive properties upward. So understanding the interplay between this investor behavior and property valuation is also very essential. Now, the next topic is really kind of, duh, is market sentiment. You know, market sentiment is often influenced by the economic conditions. Can It can have a profound effect on the property value. Basically, if a person has a negative sentiment towards the market that will drive down the prices and they could have that through things like uh, low job growth or high unemployment or bad economic optimism. Now conversely, uh, a good sentiment stemming from the economic upturn 
will lead to an increase in the property value. So it's kind of funny there that that property value can change just solely based on how you feel. All right. Um, refinancing. Uh, the level of refinancing can directly influence property valuations. When interest rates are low, homeowners are likely to refinance their mortgages so they can access additional funds and that equity. This increased liquidity in the market will contribute to higher property valuations. Conversely, during a period of rising interest rates, there is reduced refinancing activity and that's going to limit the ability for additional funds which will in fact impact property values now the thing about this is when we talk about the market shift um, we kind of been using this word as a general oh the market well you understand that the market is not a one-size-fits-all same thing with the property valuation because local market variations can play a very crucial role in determining property valuation. Now, I always joke that there are X number of lots that sit on, you know, Geist Reservoir. If you're not familiar where Geist is, it's a rather well-to-do uh, lake up on the north side of Indianapolis, Indiana. And when one of those properties go for sale, it never goes at a discount. Well, that is because that market is a strong market. Um, so vacation homes probably are not going to be impacted as much because those people tend to not be affected by those market variations. So in some regions, strong demand and limited supply may drive valuation other, higher, while in others, the challenges may lead to a decline in the property. You know, look at things, cities like Detroit, Michigan, where there were people moving out of the city uh, for various reasons. The values there plummeted on real estate because there literally was zero buyers for any property. So recognizing and understanding what your local market is and the variations is essential for you guys to help your buyers understand the dynamics of property valuation. The economic condition as a whole is a cornerstone for the property valuation. A robust and growing economy generally correlates with increased properties. All right, higher incomes, higher jobs, consumer confidence. Once again, it's that consumer sentiment that we just talked about. And obviously the other side is very true. Economic downturn leads to decreased property valuation. Investors become more risk adverse and it impacts the overall supply and demand. Which talking about that is inherently linked to the property valuation. That is probably the single biggest factor in property valuation is supply and demand. Where the demand outstrips supply, property values tend to rise or go up. Right? You got that? Conversely, if there's an oversupply of homes relative to the demand, it leads to decrease in the property value. We just saw the former in the last couple years, where there were 10 buyers for every seller, values went up. Now, as there's going to be a shift for a next couple of months or however long, you're going to have more sellers than buyers. You're going to see a decrease in property value. So the property value is a complex interplay with a lot of factors. Each one of those contribute to the nature of the real estate market. Affordability, the buyer size, uh, the buyer pool size, investor behaviors, how do you feel about the market, what's the economic condition, all of these are going to play a role in that whole market valuation or property valuation. 